I think the Republicans, they are, they are, we are, Republicans need new leadership, okay? Republicans have gained L after L after L. 2018, that was bad, that was a big L. 2020, the president didn't win, but they did gain in other, other ways. And this year is another L. The biggest L, I think, since 2018 for Republicans. I don't think the Republicans are going to win in 2018. Okay. But Republicans need to do something new. Republicans need to do something new. Okay. They need to stop. They need to... I'm going to go giving all the things that Republicans need to do to win elections in the future. Or at least be competitive and wave years for Democrats. Basically. Okay. And not be the party of the losers. Because... Republicans, same thing with the conservatives of Canada, have basically become the losers of their own country. They do they do not win elections, and they have ho- and first Republicans need to do leadership. Okay, that's the first thing. Get rid of Warner McDaniel, get rid of Kevin McCarthy, and get rid of Mitch McConnell. The current leadership has failed to produce results. Get new people in there. Get new people in there. Maybe Kevin McCarthy might stay for another two years because Trump's trying to convince the Republicans to keep him. But because Trump still has a lot of pull and sway in the Republican Party, even if even if we want to try to even if Republicans try to get rid of him, he's not going away. He is not going away. As much as a lot of people want him to go away, he's not going away. I I I, I think that Trump. Kind of did sabotage the midterms to some bit, and we'll talk about that later. But the establishment needs to go. Okay, these old god establishment fossils need to go. Mitt Romney, you know, all of these dynasties, Bushes, the Cheneys, and all these people, they really need to go. Okay, they really need to go. They're sabotaging the party, you know, and we need people who are loyal to the Republican Party. Who won't sell out the Republican Party like Liz Cheney. And people who will stand up for American values in the American Constitution. Okay. Not the not Mc, M- Mitch McConnell. Not people who will stand by to push their own agenda. To fight with the other members of the Republican Party. And we need to get rid of those people. Okay. So number one. The establishment must go, okay, with new and but and they must be replaced with new blood. They must be replaced with new blood. People who will tra- who will people people who will, of course, as well. They must be changed. They must be replaced. The establishment must go. The Democrats did that already, okay. The Democrats they they basically got rid of most of the establishment, and became a progr- and became a progressive party. And that's how they're able to win. They have able they were they were able to either coalesce the remaining members of the Democratic establishment, boot and basically try to work with the Democrats on one goal. Republicans do not. And number two is Republicans have poor messaging. Okay, you can't win the inf- you can't win elections based off oh oh we hate the president. Okay, you have to actually have messaging. You actually have to actually have to be strong on issues and. You have to actually be strong on messaging and issues, okay? You can't just be, oh, oh, you know. That's why Ron DeSantis is so popular. Ron DeSantis is so popular because he is very good on the messaging. And that's why Youngkin won, okay? And that's why Cinderella almost won. And that's why Lee Zeldin got very close in New York. All of those Republicans were very good on messaging, okay? And... You have Republicans like Tudor Dixon, which are very weak on the methadine. You have Pennsylvania, Doug Mastriano, another very weak Republican, as they all shown. Doug Mastriano, for example, is a very weak Republican. He he doesn't really appeal towards many people, and that's why he lost. He even lost places like Beaver County, okay, which is a Republican county. He lost counties that. Well, our safe Republican counties. He he watched safe Republican counties. That is not good for Doug Mastriano. He did not win the say. He did not win safe Republican counties. Okay, same thing with Michigan. You can't just get these no name people in who are weak on the messaging and who are weak on the issues 
Drew Dixon is very weak on the issues in mezzanine. All of her basically is, I, I, uh, I, I, I don't like uh, abortion and I don't like inflation. Okay. I think one issue that is very winning for Republicans is the gun issue. Okay. If you campaign on guns like Democrats campaign on abortion, you can get those gun holes to turn out and vote for Republicans. Okay. But Democrat Republicans keep nominating these very weak candidates that cannot win elections. The Michaels to the Dixon, Doug Mastriano, and Arizona. We're not talking about what We're not talking about Arizona because that 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 election was a big mess in its own. The, and the Republicans that were not weak on the that were not weak that actually had strong messages and, and were strong in the issues. Nevada. Okay, Joe Roberto won his election by around 1.5 percentage points. Okay, I already made a video about Nevada and how that state is going away from the Democrats even in this election. Okay, there's around uh, 50,000 more Democrats and Republicans in the whole entire state. Democrats had to basically just win independence by had had to really win independence by around 7,000 points in the Senate race to win the state, but basically. As a state, Nevada, if, I think this is the, this might be the last election where Democrats win in that state. This might be the last time where Democrats win in that state. But, like, for example, a state like Arizona, you know, or let's go back to the Senate. You have weak can and we'll talk about the funding next. And that that's really just tied to the establishment, not funding the races that they sort of been. But nominate people who are strong on the issues. Nominate people who will go after the cultural issues. Nominate people like DeSantis and Youngkin who go after cultural issues. That's why Youngkin won. That's why DeSantis won by 19. DeSantis went after cultural issues. He went after wokeness. He went after all of these things that people hate. And stuff that said, Oh, we're born in prison. Okay. For example, some of the candidates in even like Illinois... All they did was talk about inflation. They talk about they didn't talk about woke issues. They didn't talk about issues that people actually mad the voters or talk about inflation. You can't just win out you can't just win on one issue. And Republicans need to stop nominating one issue one issue candidates. Okay. One issue candidates do not win elections. Okay. You have to be you have to have broad sense on many issues. Okay. That's how people win elections. Okay. You don't win elections by just pointing up a one issue candidate and saying, Oh, oh, but inflation, 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 the economy. Yes, economy was the number one issue. But if we don't talk about all the rest of the issues that actually matter, for example, wokeness is one big issue a lot of people hate. Let's look at the tanking of Hollywood, the decline of Hollywood, the decline of Disney, the decline of Facebook, the, the, the transformation of Twitter. People don't like wokeness. Okay, yes, the advertisers will, will get angry at these companies, but the wokeness is not the future of anything. Anything woke goes broke. And that's why Texas, the Greg Abbott did better than Trump in Texas. Greg Abbott did better than Trump in Texas by around four points. He did better than Trump on Texas. And... <sighs> He simply said that he was not going to ban guns in Texas, and basically, Texas voted by a safe margin for Greg Abbott. Okay. By a 10 point margin. Same thing with Florida. The governor of Florida campaigned against wokeness and woke issues, and that's how he won the election. He won the election because he campaigned against woke issues. Okay, there's a lot of winning issues gun rights, gun, the Second Amendment, the first, free speech is a winning issue for Republicans. Okay, a lot of people support free speech. Okay, Republicans didn't do anything about censorship. Of course, Elon Musk is doing something, or that's why Elon Musk is so popular. It's because he's actually doing something thing for people who want free speech. Okay. Okay, gain rid of stuff like impersonation, which is a big issue on Twitter. Okay, gain rid of stuff that, you know, harms people and companies, which is impersonation. Allowing people to free, freely speak their mind. Of course, if you really want a site that for people to freely speak their mind, there's that that there's a site called a Gab. I think that's the site where, you, where, where it's basically just around where like the wild rest of the yet everybody's allowed to say what they want, which as well. But again, free speech is a popular issue for Republicans. The only issue that they and of course immigration. Greg Abbott did pretty well uh, with people who were concerned on immigration. Okay, same thing with Ron DeSantis, same thing with, you know, Roberto. 
I think if Ron say if Ron say did more about immigration, I think he would have won. But these Republicans need to rule and no way issue with energy. Whereas if if Marciano was actually funded, he could have actually did, he could have actually won. But no, that's the next issue is funding. Marciano didn't get any funding whatsoever from the RNC because he was too far right. Okay. Even though Marciano was actually here on the energy issue in Pennsylvania. But the problem is these old fossils who who control the funding and we'll talk about Trump as well in this as well. These old rhino fossils who control where the funding goes. For example, in the Senate, okay, we lost two Senate seats because Miss McConnell refused to fund Brake Masters and Rick Salt in these two states. Instead, he wanted to make sure. Oh, we, 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 we wanted. Uh, we wanted. You know. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, you know. Lisa Bukowski to win in Alaska. Miss McConnell wanted Lisa Bukowski to win in Alaska, basically. Okay. And that's a problem. You have these people who will go and fund completely pointless races, and will not fund the races that actually matter. Okay. Same thing in the House. The establishment did not fund any of these swing districts and for the deep blue districts, which, you know, they won some of them because of Zeldin, but they they lost most of these deep blue districts because you can't, they're not going to, they weren't going to win these deep blue districts. Look at the house. So, some of these races like Michigan, some of these races in Michigan were easily winnable if Republicans didn't fund these, if Republicans actually funded these districts. Ranzine and Flint district and the Grand Rapids district. They would have won if they if the Republicans actually funded all the, the candidates. But nope, Mitch McConnell, Mick Coffey, and Ronald McDaniel and the rest of the establishment refused to fund these people. That's why they lost in these areas. And that's why they lost in swing states as well. Same thing with the Senate as well. And yeah, Republicans are going to win the House. Mike Garcia is going to win. His Rio action. So that may gives Republicans a majority because Mike Garcia is going to win as well. What's Mike Garcia's district? Yeah, Mike Garcia is going to win. Valadeo is probably going to win as well. You know, he's another one of the old rhino establishment people that's been there for a while. Uh, well, but again, Republicans need to fund more of the swing districts. Okay, they need to fund more of the swings. You know, more of these districts that are more competitive, I think they would have done well, better in. But that's, but again, you know, that's the problem for Republicans is they refuse to fund some of these districts. They refuse to fund some of these districts as well. And that's another problem. And Trump is another part of the problem too. I, I know people, but, but we, well, some people are defending Trump, but Trump is a part of the problem. Okay. He didn't campaign for break baskets. Or, you know, he didn't campaign at all. He didn't really campaign all too much in Arizona and Pennsylvania. Where he sort of... He didn't campaign too much in Michigan either. For Tudor Dixon. He didn't campaign too much in Wisconsin. He campaigned in safe Republican states like Florida and Texas. Okay? Yeah, we know Ron DeSantis is going to win anyways. We know he, Republicans are going to win in Florida. We know Republicans are going to win in Ohio. Why don't you just campaign in the Rust Belt? That's why you won in the Rust Belt. Because you were able to get out these people... To vote, but Trump didn't do it as well. Well, but again, Trump can only do so much. Okay, the establishment who controls most of the Republican war tests, most of the Republican money, refused to fund these districts. Okay, so they, they, they didn't fund these districts, so they lost these districts because they refused to fund them. Okay, and that's why Republicans did not win, so did not do too well, they did not get the massive rants that they wanted. They were they lost easily winnable districts. For example, this district in this district in Northern Illinois, Republicans could have easily won that district. Okay, I'm talking about this one with Peoria and Rockford. Republicans could have easily won it. Barry won Rockford count, won the county where Rockford is from. Okay, Barry won that county. Okay, but Republicans did not fund, obviously, in that district. Okay. Republicans seriously need new new people, people who will run the party better, who won't run the party to the ground. And I think nothing Republicans need to do is to stop being so, you know, 
against early voting and mail-in voting. The Democrats are able to amass massive amount of voters by mail-in voting, by mass power harvesting. They did that in 2020, they did it in 2022. Okay, but Republicans are too much of a coward, and they're finally starting to admit that, hey, we if we want to have election reforms, we need to play by their rules to win. And that's what they should do. Republicans should play by the Democrats' rules to win. Democrats buy more ballots, we do, Republicans do ballot harvesting too and get more ballots in their states. It's just that simple. Okay. It isn't that hard or difficult. Okay. As well. And Republicans would be able to win if they did the if they did mass ballot harvesting, like Demo- Democrats win, so they can be compa- so they can win in some of these competitive races as well. And also, Republicans need, need to stop being. We need Republicans that are actually strong on many of the winning issues. Okay, not weak Republicans that talk about inflation all the time. For example, crime. Crime is a major issue in places like Pennsylvania, Illinois, and New York, and was and even play and, and of course Michigan, and yeah. It's a very big issue in most of these these swing states, and of course Illinois and New York, but Republicans didn't really campaign all too much on crime, especially in Pennsylvania. If Marciano campaigned on crime more, I bet he would he probably would have done way better. But Marciano wasn't funded. That is the problem. So most of these problems feed into each other. The establishment refused to fund, you know, candidates. Uh, you have poor candidates and bad candidates that were unelectable. Well, but the Assembly refused to fund them, so they can't even be competitive in the first place. And then you have weak candidates like Tudor Dixon that can't that will lose by ten. Okay, that are weak on the issues. Okay, we need people who are strong on the issues, people who are good on the issues, people who can get it close, who can win elections, people who will campaign against wokeness, who will campaign for American values and American values. I do not think the idea of making America great again is dead. I think the problem is Republicans are our disorganized party and you have these fossils that refuse to run, these fossil establishment people who refuse to fund any races whatsoever and that's a big problem because this is a very bad thing if the if they keep these establishment losers is in power. You know, the old fossil, old guard Republicans like the Romneys and of course, you know, McConnell and all these people. Okay. Yeah. So that's all the things Republicans need to do. Okay. Democrats lost in 2018, 2016. And the curious said, you know what? Let's change our party. Let's make sure we win an election. Okay. Instead of saying, oh, fraud, fraud, fraud. Why don't we play it? Why don't the Republicans play the same game Democrats play? Okay. Actually stop being weak on the issues. Going full, you know, force. You know, Democrats, another thing is Democrats are able to give galvanized voters. They're able to turn out young voters because they go on war. They act like it's war. They act like we have, that it's your obligation, it's your duty. Republicans don't really motivate people to come out except for DeSantis and Youngkin. Okay. They really don't. Okay. Tudor Dixon didn't do it. Marciano didn't do it. Okay. And even someone like Rake didn't win. But again, Republicans need to really be strong. And Rick didn't win because he dispelled Mitt, Mitt Romney. We all know, not Mitt Romney. He dispelled Don McCain. Okay. Where it's turned off a lot of Republican voters from voting. Where it's, it's pretty hilarious. Which means, hopefully Arizona Republicans realize that they can't attack Don McCain in Arizona. Okay, they can't. Okay, they can't. Okay. It's like if the, it's like if the, if the next Republican governor attacked Ron DeSantis in Florida. And then the Democrats won in Florida because they wanted, and they won like, oh, why did we not win Florida? Oh, wait, you attacked the governor that was well loved in Florida. Yeah, yeah, you sort of have done that. You sort of have done that. Okay. Okay. That's never the attacking the Democrats, but the attacking their own and eating their own, that's a bad thing. I think another problem is Republicans, you know, problem of youth voters. Okay. Republicans do very, very well in education and education issues with parents. Okay. They do very well in education issues. Okay. And the Republicans are taking back the school board. They are. They are very fastly taking back the school boards because parents don't like it. Don't want the kids to be indoctrinated by pe- by the teachers. And parents are getting are, are sick of it. But Republicans, with the exception of Youngkin and DeSantis, don't really do much about that issue. If Tua Dixon campaigned about the woke issues in schools, she would have won. 
Same thing with the government, the, the person who was Tim Michaels. I keep forgetting who he is. I think that's the reason Tim Michaels was because I don't even I I keep forgetting who he is. But yeah, same thing on Marciano. Marciano again. No, Republicans refuse to fund Marciano. But again, Republicans need to stop nominating very weak candidates because the Democrats they'll go behind. They they have they already have a voter base. They'll go behind anyone that the Democrats do. And basically, campaign and woke issues get independence over for, or people who are turning away from the Democratic Party and make so they have their votes solidified. It isn't that hard for Republicans to do that. But, but they dropped the ball this election, is basically what I'm saying. And Republicans need to do all of those changes. Okay, campaign on woke issues. Try to appease people towards young people who are struggling in the economy. Okay, try to appeal towards young people. Who are struggling in the current economy. Okay. A lot of young people are struggling. Okay. They're struggling. Okay. But Republicans like. Oh. 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 They, okay. Republicans won't use social media. Like TikTok. To promote their. Content. Look at. Look at TikTok. Okay. John Fetterman. Has a little account on TikTok. And his videos. Are, are appearing a lot on TikTok. Okay. As much as we, as much as we hate, as much as Republicans like to say, oh, well, is a such a bad candidate, he's able to reach out to the youngins and get the youngins to turn out for him, okay? And Dr. Doctor Oz, he's not relatable much to the youngins, but better man, he is much more relatable to the youngins, young people like me, than Dr. Oz, okay? I'm not more, I'm not like most young people, but many young people want people who can relate to them, okay? Who can relate to them, okay? For example, DeSantis. Example of that. DeSantis, young people can relate to DeSantis. They can't relate to Dr. Oz, Tudor Dixon, My, Tim Michaels, uh, as well. They can't relate to these people. They can't, okay? They can easily relate to Ron DeSantis because Ron DeSantis is very likable. Okay, Dr. Oz is not a very good candidate. I'm sorry. But yeah, I think candidate quality does matter. We need to have people who are strong in the issues, who are not weak on the issues, who will actually campaign, who will actually run good campaigns, who will be, and of course the Republicans have to fund these people in the first place, but we need people who are strong candidates, who are willing to go, be strong in the issues, and not to say, oh yeah, economy and phrasing, economy and phrasing, economy and phrasing, okay, and actually say why we need to, why, why the economy is bad. Try to try to find solutions for inflation and solutions for the economy. Try to find solutions for woke issues, okay, and culture war issues, okay. The Santos and Young can run on culture war issues, okay. Try to find solutions for culture war issues, okay. Isn't that hard for Republicans to go hard on culture war issues, okay? Some of these places are winnable, are very winnable. The Nevada's races are winnable. A lot of these races are very winnable, as I said. I said if Republicans do well, they would get around 240 to, they would get around 250 seats. But Republicans dropped the ball, okay? Which, you know, isn't too surprising to me, because they did the same thing in, the Democrats did the same thing in 1978, the Republicans did the same thing in 1978, as well, that in 1998, but that, but the following in 2020, no, no, not 2020, 2000 and 1980, Republicans won the presidency of both elections, which means Republicans are gonna probably win in 2024. If friends, happen the way they do, because we all know the economy is going to get way worse in 2023. Okay, everybody's predicting a massive recession next year, and. Maybe it's a blessing the skies Republicans didn't really win by much because you can't really, you you can't really blame the Republicans besides them being the house having a majority in the house. But even then, you can get some of the wilds to switch over and pass the legislation. So you know, like Valadeo, okay, who will probably win. It's only these more rhino Republicans, some of the more moderate or rhino Republicans to cross over. So the ones who will be blamed for the econ economic failures will, of course, be Joe Biden and Democrats. But it, but if Republicans have the same leadership, they may not win. Republicans need to leadership. They need to have Republicans that are able to fund swing races and win swing races, says, 
and not focus on safe blue districts. And what Democrats waste the time, you know, funding against Marjorie Taylor Greene? Let them waste the time. Yes, they got slightly closer against Marjorie Taylor Greene, but they can't. They're never gonna flip that seat. Okay, they're never gonna flip that seat. That is a safe Republican wall district. They're never gonna flip that seat. Okay. Saving a Florida. Don't spend that much in Florida. Spend, don't spend that so much in the safe Republican states. Spend, of course, some money, but pay, take the spend in the states like that really matter. Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Georgia, Nevada, and Arizona. Those are the states that are the most important at the current moment as well. Those are the states that federal Republicans should have the most funding in. Okay. Not really Florida much anymore because Florida is now a Republican state. Okay. They secured Florida, maybe from North North Carolina as well. Well, but they secured the state of Florida. Okay, we all I already talked about the good news. States like New York getting close, Florida, okay, becoming so Republican that Democrats have collapsed in the state of Florida, making South Carolina a safe borderline of forty percent win for Republicans, or well, on forty percent win for Republicans. Okay, making Iowa a safe Republican state and. Keeping Ohio as a safe Republican state as well. Okay. Yeah, the defense underperformed Trump, but he still won the state by around 6.5. He still won the state. He's not... He wasn't going to lose the state regardless. But... Maybe put some fun in places like Ohio, Texas, uh, North Carolina as well. Well, because they're not fully safe Republican seats. States, but also have good messaging and good campaigning. Try to relate to younger people more, and of course, try to play the same games the Democrats with with mail and voting. Because if you don't play the games that your foes play and underestimate your opponents every single time, you're never gonna win. You're never gonna win. Don't underestimate. Don't get complacent, and and continue fighting. Is basically what you have to do in a war. War in a battle. Okay, but it's, it's a political war, basically. Because there is still a political solution to save America. But Republicans need to stop being spineless and actually do something about this and learn something from this election. Goodbye.